What's clean, mean, and green? Europe, the green jolly giant of the world. I was gonna go with the Hulk, but they're having an energy crisis and they need the US for muscle. So we're sticking with the jolly giant. There's no doubt that you've heard of the European energy crisis. Why? Because as the Indian external affairs minister put it best, Europe's problems are the world's problems and the world's problems aren't Europe's problems. Many believe that the energy crisis started after Russia invaded Ukraine. But energy experts claim that it goes back to when Russia was not Russia, but the Soviet Union, in which Europe became addicted to its gas because it was cheap and around the corner, just like your neighborhood drug dealer. With natural gas now being in the EU's backyard, by the end of 2015, it was able to reduce its coal use by 42% to meet its climate targets. Germany also reduced its nuclear power production, placing Europe in the lead to becoming the first climate neutral continent. The energy bind grew larger when Putin became president in the year 2000 which is the same year Sony released its PlayStation 2, selling over 150 million units worldwide. Part of its success relied on its backwards compatibility, allowing users to play games on the console from the previous model. Similar to Putin's grounds of success as the longest reigning democratically elected president, allowing candidates from previous elections to still run against him. Over the years, Russia slowly worked its way into becoming Europe's largest provider of oil, coal and natural gas, with natural gas providing up to 40% of Europe's energy supply, which is what the Kardashians were to Caitlyn Jenner while she was transitioning. They provided clothing, makeup, and fame. And the moment she stopped laying down the pipe for Chris, they stopped allowing her access into their closets. That's what Europe did. They imposed sanctions to appease the US and stopped stroking Putin's pipe, causing Putin to slowly but surely deny them access into his closets. Just like Caitlyn's transition, however, the cutoff didn't happen overnight. It started with the Russian gas company Gazprom blaming the lowered gas supply on production difficulties followed shortly after with the explosion of the Nord Stream pipelines. Two pipelines that run directly from Russia to Germany through the Baltic Sea. Although no one claimed responsibility for the explosions, President Biden accused Russia calling it a deliberate act of sabotage. While some suggested Germany may know a thing or two for the fact that it found itself in quite the conundrum having to decide between failing to follow suit with the West sanctions on Russia or failing to adhere to the energy treaty that Germany had signed with Russia. But thanks to the Nord Stream explosions, Germany no longer needs to worry, making this the second series of explosions that helped push the West's agenda. Explosions aside, Putin has made it clear that the cutdowns were in retaliation to the EU's stance on the war with Ukraine and its implementation of economic sanctions against Russia. Now, let's be clear. Although sanctions are meant to deter bad behavior, enforce economic punishment, and force the targeted country into rehabilitation, the reality is sanctions often fail with a success rate of only 40%, which is the same percent chance you can get away with murder in America. That's because fewer than half the crimes are reported and fewer than half of the ones reported are actually solved. I'm just saying that OJ has a better chance playing one more season in the NFL than being convicted for the murder of Nicole Brown. So far, economic sanctions from the US and NATO members have backfired. The value of the rubble is barely affected and according to CNBC, the Russian rubble hit its strongest level in seven years, all the while, Europe seems to be heading into a recession. Recent history proves that sanctions rarely change a regime's ideology or behavior. Take a look at Syria, for example. After the Arab Spring in 2011, the US government calibrated numerous sanctions to deprive the regime of the resources it needs, yet Bashar al-Assad is still president. Fun fact, President Assad was a med school graduate and showed no interest in politics growing up. Rumor has it he got a 40% in his poli-sci class, which according to NATO standards is the ideal score for his role as president. North Korea is another great example, receiving its first set of embargoes and sanctions after the Korean War in the 50s. And over three generations, the Kim dynasty only grew to become more aggressive and better armed with long range missiles and dozens of nuclear weapons. Who knew that out of all the dictators around the world, the Asian one would end up having the largest missile. But how did all of this affect Europe? Leading up to the new year, energy prices spiked across Europe almost tenfold leaving the governments as well as the public in a state of panic, resulting in an outbreak of protests in countries like France, Germany, Spain, and even Cyprus, who to this day other EU nations still wonder what it brings to the table. People took to the streets demanding lower gas prices and better living costs, with some protesters also suggesting the dissolution of NATO. As a response, the EU pledged expedited efforts and investments towards clean renewable alternatives to avoid future energy dependency issues with the IEA projecting for the EU to be completely reliant on clean energy by 2030. Germany, for example, is spending over $200 billion in a rescue package aimed to ease the energy crisis for industries and households, along with placing price caps that allow businesses and consumers to buy 80% of their energy at last year's price. 
while increasing its use of coal and extending the life of nuclear power stations that initially intended to shut down. Just like Pope Benedict, Germany seems to have found itself in quite the lead role taking all the heat for the past neglect and misconduct of other members. Let's just hope that Germany's measures actually pan out. For those who think this joke was out of line, we here at Dare to Defy are sorry for the loss of Pope Benedict. But truth be told, he did have a confusing legacy. Just like the breakfast dish, it looks good on the outside, but the moment you take one bite, you'll realize how messy it can get. Messy breakfast aside, European governments and businesses took measures in 2022 that helped them get through this winter. Efforts such as demand reduction and stockpiling on liquefied natural gas mixed with consumer actions and the luck of a warmer winter all helped compensate for the drop in Russian deliveries this past year. The truth is, however, there are risks involved. Accidents and technical problems may still happen at major pipelines or LNG terminals. And not all member states can afford the luxury of providing relief programs and social benefits for their citizens. And it is those differences between member states and their capability in supporting their citizens that may fuel political differences leading to the fragmentation of Europe. Regardless on where you stand on the debate of what really started the European energy crisis, have it be the reliance on Russian energy supply, or whether it's Europe protecting its US interests rather than its own citizens, governments still need a reliable solution to get them through the years to come. Europe is being used, and their citizens along with their governments are falling further behind as their jobs and wealth flee mostly to the US leaving the European economy in a vulnerable position and at a point of uncertainty of whether it would ever prosper again. One thing is for certain, as Europe marches to the beat of Uncle Sam's drum, both the EU and Russia will suffer, and the US will ultimately meet its needs. European political leaders need to carefully decide on the direction they wish to take their nations, as today's decisions on how to manage the limited energy supply will shape not only the future of its energy system, but its economy as well. And maybe, just maybe, these same leaders will realize that it should be them, not their citizens, who have to dig deep into their pockets to deal with the mishaps of their policies. My name is Sada Lessa, and this has been Dare to Defy.